Class D semifinals, second season in a row. St. Clement has gotten as far as the semis. Now, Chris also has some graduation problems. He loses his starting quarterback and top wide receiver, Andy Shemansky from last year, quarterback Mike Dyskowski, also had some heavy losses along the line, much the same way as East Detroit did. So those are some areas of concern for Chris as he enters his second year at the helm. We, uh, we've got some young guys, unfortunately, in some key roles. Uh, we have a lot of seniors. We have 17 seniors, and uh, we may be starting 9 or 10 seniors, but we will have one or two sophomores in there. But it's been rough making the adjustment. The offensive lines come along, the defensive lines come along, and that naturally takes time, a little more than the skill positions. We're blessed to have uh, skill guys. We do have a lot of skill guys. We have good running backs. Uh, Ronnie Slowinski, our quarterback, has been working hard all year, and he's ready to go. I've got three very good wide receivers, a very good tight end. Uh, if we can just plug some holes, I think we're going to be all right. Yeah, your running back situation, you've got Caruso back, Ranieri back. Uh, so you're, you're not bad back in the backfield, except you have to plug Slowinski in, as you say, quarterback, right? Right. Ronnie's done a good job in the scrimmages. He's, uh, he's had a year uh, to learn the system under Diz. Uh, he's, like I say, he's done a good job all summer. Uh, we're a little thin right now at running back. We, got, we had a couple of ineligibilities that hurt us. Uh, we've had a couple of injuries. As long as we can stay healthy, you know, I think we'll be pretty potent offensively. I'm looking forward, hopefully, to, to even doing a better job this year throwing the football. What about on defense? Again, you lost some big linemen. Huh? Right, we returned, uh, we returned Tony, who was an all-county linebacker mm -hmm. last year. Uh, Jeremy Ranieri and Lenzel Jones are two outstanding yeah. corners. They're probably the two better cover corners around. Uh, so they give us some stability there. Ian Lanovich returns to defensive end, and Brent Pastushin is going from defensive end down to defensive tackle. It gives us a little more size up there. So we've got some experience. Uh, you know, the rest of the guys are going to have to step up and fill in. Uh, we may be starting a sophomore defensive tackle on Matt Daniels, but uh, he's a pretty good-sized kid, pretty strong kid, and hopefully the experience of the older guys can bring those younger guys along. What's a big difference for you personally this year, your second year now as head coach of this team uh, after coming in last season as the newcomer here? Probably the biggest difference is that we can evaluate who we're going to play. You know, last year we, uh, we really couldn't evaluate the talent that we were going to see until we went through it. And now, uh, you know, and the kids plus understand our expectations, and I think they've adjusted to us. Uh, they understand the kind of program that we run, the commitment we expect out of them. But I think uh, probably the biggest, uh, the biggest asset now is we can evaluate our competition. Uh, you know, we feel that we know how good we have to be. And I think it helps us out compared to last year where we were pretty much going in blind. This is a team that's went to the state semis two years in a row now. It's got to make it. It, does it make it easier to come into preseason practice, or do you have to fire the kids up so they don't get complacent with it? It, it makes it easier in a sense in that they know what we expect. You know, we expect big things. They, they know that they're expected to win football games. But on the other hand, it's tough because whenever you have a season that long, you know, it's like the start of a marathon. You know, when you're sitting there at the start of the marathon, you know you've got a long, grueling race ahead of you. And they know the commitment, they know the sacrifices, they know the physical pain, the mental pain, and it's never easy. I mean, we had problems last year. But, you know, you work through those things, and hopefully if you're a close unit, you can get through and help each other out. And uh, they know it's going to be a long run. You know, this will be an interesting year in that we don't know what to expect. You know, last year we had a lot of size, uh, a lot of strength. And this year we've got some skilled guys, but if our lines come along, we could be an outstanding football team. The, as we said, two years in a row, state semis. Didn't get to the prep bowl last year, got there two years ago, of course. That has to be one of the main goals, as it is every year, but uh, maybe more so this year since you missed it by a game last year? Very much so. That, that's our goal. That's our number one goal is uh, the kids want to play in the Silver Dome. The kids want to be in the Dome, and, that, and that's going to be in the prep bowl. And uh, if we can get to the prep bowl, you know, everything else will take care of itself. We'll have won our league. Uh, that will qualify us for the playoffs, and, uh, and that is our number one goal. Very tough league again. East Catholic drops out this year, but St. Florian moves up, and that's really not much of a difference, is it, between those two? No, clubs. Florian's got a great tradition. They're going to have talented kids. They've got a good coach coming in, and Keith Karpinski, he replaces Eddie Belcrest, who left. Uh, Lakes has to be the favorite coming in. You know, they, were, they won it all last year. They won the league last year, and until somebody knocks them off, I, I consider them the favorite. They've, uh, you know, Notre Dame went out and bought Notre Dame Prep out in Oakland County, and Lakes has benefited a little bit from that. They've got a lot of transfers now who, who left Notre Dame Prep and came to Lakes, so they're basically reloading. Uh, I think everybody else is, uh, is going to be nothing but better. I think Shrine's going to be improved. Uh, Agatha has some great athletes. Richard loves to throw the football, and they had some young, good athletes last year, so it's going to be a very challenging league. It'll be an interesting league in that 
Last year, I think, between us and Lakes, we kind of separated ourselves from the pack. And this year, I don't think that's going to happen. I think every game is going to be a dogfight. And it may be rare, but or it, it'll be rare if I, or unheard of if the champion goes through undefeated in our league. It, I think very easily you can see the champion with at least one loss. And on the hardwood at St. Clement, Pete Marvin has some problems of his own as far as replacing girls. He has to replace seniors Connie Grenowitz, Jessica Urban, among others, plus Andrea Dacey, uh, a junior this year who transferred to Detroit Country Day during the last school year. But Pete has some capable players back and some players capable of stepping in to fill the void. Well, this year we, uh, we do. We have uh, seven returning seniors that... Uh, some of them have quite a bit of playing time from last year and others uh, not as much. But all together we're looking for more of a team aspect. Uh, last year we had one or two girls that we basically ran our offense to and this year I think you're going to see more of a, of a probably a seven or eight man rotation in the lineup with a lot of uh, team concept on the offense where everybody's going to touch the ball. Our offense this year is not going to be designated for one player. It's uh, some multiple offenses, probably going to, uh, we call it, the people who know it as the flex. And we have five, six pretty good ball handlers, so everybody's going to get a chance to touch the ball this year. And I think that's our biggest improvement overall. We'll have more girls involved. How do you replace Connie's height? Uh, uh, is that going to be a problem this year? Yeah, Connie, as you know, was a four-year starter here. When I came here, she was a sophomore, and uh, the first year they asked her to rebound and set picks. Last three years, I've asked her to contribute on the offensive end, and she did. Uh, anytime you have a girl who's played four years, who's 5'11 and good size and rebounded well and played good defense, it's always hard to replace her. The thing is, we're going to have to play, like I said before, more team basketball. Uh, we're going to have to help a lot on defense from the you know, offside, and uh, you'll probably see us trap a lot more, gamble with our speed. This year, we'll definitely be quicker. We won't be as big, but we'll be able to use our speed. You mentioned uh, seven girls coming back uh, this year's squad. Uh, you start just a few days from now in the Foley tournament. Yeah. What's your starting five going to be, and then your first couple, three off the bench as well? It's, it's kind of hard to say right now what the starting five is going to be, because really uh, I have about eight, seven or eight girls you could probably put their names into a bag and pull out any five, and those five but would just do just as good as the other three that you didn't pull. Uh, but we have uh, our senior leadership this year is probably going to come from Stephanie Pellish. Uh, she'll play center and forward. Uh, we have uh, Lynn Malkowski, who's an all-state uh, volleyball player, and uh, she's just a great athlete, and uh, she's going to help out at the forward position, and, she'll pr and she's a good rebounder, and she'll probably play a little bit at uh, center position. Uh, we probably will start maybe uh, three seniors, a couple underclassmen. At times, we might have a lineup with five seniors in it. It all depends. We do have some young girls. Our uh, JV team last year only lost one game. The only game they lost was to Bishop Fuller in the Bishop Fuller tournament, and they were league champs. That team is pretty well intact down there for one more year at the JV level, other than one girl that we brought up, uh, a couple girls we brought up. One's a junior, uh, Kristen Konsecki, and uh, Tammy Bastion is a sophomore. Uh, Tammy has to work defensively on her game, but offensively she's there. Uh, we have Rihanna Davis, Brenda Berry, um, Angela Shemansky is an all-league guard coming back. We have another sophomore in uh, Cindy Chapp. Uh, Tracy Meyer is a senior this year that we're looking forward to coming off the bench and doing a big job. But like I said, we got, I hope I didn't miss nobody's name, but uh, if we did, I didn't do it intentionally. But, uh, we have probably seven or eight girls that I can really throw in there I really feel comfortable with. What do you think about the league this year? Usually uh, a pretty uh, competitive one. I'm sure it'll be the same this year. Uh, overall, our league, I say, uh, you got the, the big league in the central division with Regina and all them, but uh, if you look at our league, for the class uh, schools that we have in our league, we probably have one of the toughest league competitive day in and day out as there is anywhere in the state. Uh, we have Our Lady of the Lakes Waterford, who I would say would probably be the favorites this year. Uh, they won the league last year, and they didn't lose that many girls. And uh, uh, they're well coached by Ann Rexford out there. And uh, they added uh, Mount, uh, I mean, Marine City Cardinal Mooney this year. 
and they went all the way to the semifinals last year, and they were 28 and two, and uh, they're in our league this year along with ourselves and Bishop Gallagher and St. Florian's, and uh, you got five real competitive teams. We're gonna there's not we used to have a night or two when we used to have Star of the Sea and and Dominican in there where. There were games, but you, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, man, it'd be a nice time to get everybody in and get a lot of playing time. Now, this year, we don't have that luxury. Uh, a game in, game out in our league is going to be pretty tough. And then our non-league conference, like we opened, uh, you said, with uh, the Bishop Fuller tournament, and we're playing a Class A school in Ferndale. And any time, I don't care, uh, they say, well, Ferndale isn't known for the girls' basketball. A few years ago, they were. And any time you play a Class A school where they have the numbers to draw from, uh, uh, anything can happen. We're going to be prepared to play. We'll, we're Class D. We're going to give anybody we play uh, uh, a good battle. But we play a very, very positive and, uh, and a great schedule. I mean, you know, we got Marine City uh, this year. We got Aquinas from uh, uh, Division A Catholic League. We got uh, uh, Riverview Gabriel Richard, which is the um, Division A and uh, Class A. Uh, in the Catholic League, and it's a very, very competitive schedule. So, going in, if we can play 500 ball in our non-league, uh, I would really consider that a bonus this year, and we'll look forward to it. I think we we have a, re a realistic chance. I feel if we improve, to be right there in the hunt. Uh, our main goal is to make the Catholic League playoffs, and, uh, and if things go right, we get a break or two. Who knows where we'll end up. So there you have a look at how the football and girls basketball teams are shaping up for this season as we are ready to get the season underway. Let's take a look now first at the schedules for the next couple of weeks. The first couple of weeks of the season as football and girls basketball and all the other fall sports kick off for 1994. And let's start out with the opening of the football season on Friday, September 2nd. Two games on tap. In football, River Rouge at Centerline. We'll have that one for you on the Game of the Week, and we'll run down that Game of the Week schedule in just a couple of minutes. Also, East Detroit opens the season Friday. They are on the road traveling to Royal Oak to take on the Kimball Knights. Now on Saturday, September 3rd, St. Clement gets their football season underway at home over there at Centerline Memorial Field. They take on Carsonville Port Sanilac in their season's opener. And in girls basketball, St. Clement wraps up play in the Bishop Foley Tournament also on Saturday. Everyone off, of course, for the Labor Day holiday and action will resume on Tuesday, September the 6th. In girls basketball, St. Clement at home hosting Clawson. Cross country, East Detroit will travel to Clintondale to get their season going. And in girls tennis, the Shamrocks are up at Algonac to take on the Muskrats. What a great nickname that is up there. Wednesday, September the 7th. It is soccer action as Centerline travels just down the road from us here at uh, McLean Hunter to take on Lutheran East just down Kelly Road there. In girls tennis, Centerline hosts Royal Oak Don Darrow. Girls basketball, East Detroit rare Wednesday game. Shamrocks take on Anchor Bay. Again, that's a game of the weaker. And uh, stay with us to find out when that one will air. And then girls tennis, Shamrocks are at home as they host Lance Cruz North. Lots of action Thursday, September 8th. We need two pages, in fact. One just for centerline by themselves. In soccer, the Panthers host Bethesda. Girls basketball, Chuck Godman and the Panthers will host Clintondale. In girls tennis, the Panthers travel to Lakeview to take on the Huskies. And in cross country, the Panthers host their own Invitational. In non-centerline action on September 8th, more girls basketball. St. Clement travels to face Southgate Aquinas. The Shamrocks of East Detroit take on Warren Lincoln in what is always a heated rivalry on the hardwood. Cross country, East Detroit at home as they take on Marine City. And in girls uh, swimming, the Shamrocks also at home in the pool as they will face Royal Oak Kimball. Friday, September 9th, week two of football sees Centerline at home against Benedictine. Both the Panthers and St. Clement open the season with impressive home stands. East Detroit also opens their home part of the season on the 9th as they take on the Crusaders from Lance Cruz North. And in girls tennis, Centerline is up at Anchor Bay. 
Saturday, September 10th, a couple of cross-country teams go up to Algonac for an Invitational. Centerline and East Detroit both making their way up there for the Muskrat Invitational. In football, St. Clement at home, they take on Warren Fitzgerald out of the Macomb Oakland Athletic Conference. So you could probably bet that Pete Call might be an interested spectator in the stands at that one, a chance to scout Fitz. And in girls tennis, East Detroit is at Mount Clemens. Monday, September the 12th, soccer action, centerline at Avondale. In girls swimming, the Panthers are at Warren Mott. Two girls tennis matches, Avondale at centerline, and the Shamrocks are at Cast Tech on a match that will be held on Belle Isle. And Tuesday, September the 13th, a couple of girls basketball games, including another Game of the Week affair. The battle for bragging rights in centerline as the Panthers travel just across town to take on the St. Clement Crusaders. Also, East Detroit is at Lance Cruz North in girls basketball. And in cross country, the Shamrocks will be at home in a three-way meet as they host Utica and Frazier. And as always, we will have a full slate of games for you on the TV3 High School Game of the Week. We've got some good ones coming up this season. Let's take a look at the entire fall season on GOTW. And we kick off our season with the kickoff of the football season. River Rouge and Centerline going at it. Now the dates on the bottom of the screen, of course, the days and times that the games can be seen on TV3, not when they are played. And so you can see Rouge and Centerline Saturday, September 3rd at 1 in the afternoon and Wednesday, September 7th at 6 in the evening. We follow that up with some girls basketball. East Detroit hosting Anchor Bay and the Shamrocks and the Tars will have at it Saturday, September 10th at 1 o'clock on TV3 and also Wednesday, September 14th at 4 p.m. Then the battle for centerline, always a good one. Panthers and Crusaders get it on this time at St. Clement's Gym. And you can see that Wednesday, September 14th at 7 p.m. And Saturday, September 17th at 1 in the afternoon. Back to the gridiron for a traditional football battle. Roseville at East Detroit. Two old Eastern Michigan League rivals have at it at Memorial Field. You can see it Saturday, September 17th at 4 in the afternoon and Wednesday, September 21st at 6 p.m. Back to girls basketball action as the Centerline Panthers host Taylor Light and Life. And you can see that one Saturday, September 24th at 1 and Wednesday, September 28th at 6 in the evening. Stay on the hardwood as St. Clement takes on Waterford, Our Lady of the Lakes. And you heard Pete Marvin say that Waterford, Our Lady, the defending champ, they're going to be tough again this year. This should be a good test for the Crusaders. You can see it Wednesday, October 5th at 6 in the afternoon and Saturday, October 8th at 1 p.m. Football action as we start a string of football games now. Royal Oak Shrine at St. Clement. You can see that one Saturday, October 8th at 4 p.m. and Wednesday, October 12th at 6 in the evening. And then we start homecoming week. It's always fun for homecoming. We have three in a row again this year. Shamrocks taking on Warren Cousineau. And if Lincoln Stocks uh, has his way and the Cousineau Patriots have their way, this could be a battle for a division championship. And that will be the Shamrock Homecoming, and you can see it on Sunday, October 16th at 1 p.m. and Wednesday, October 19th at 6 p.m. Very next day, St. Clement takes on Redford St. Agatha in their homecoming football game, and you can see it a couple days later, Wednesday, October 19th at 8.30 p.m. as we have a homecoming doubleheader on Wednesday the 19th. And then Saturday, October 22nd at 1 in the afternoon again, you can see the Crusaders and St. Agatha, who have quite a fine rivalry of their own. Finally, Centerline hosts the Madison Eagles on their homecoming football game, and you can see that Saturday, October, that should be 22nd at 4 p.m., and Wednesday, October 26th at 6 p.m. That's Saturday, October 22nd. 
Finally, the fall season will wrap up on the game of the week, at least, with another Eastern Michigan League revival as East Detroit takes on Mount Clemens in girls basketball. These two teams had some wars early in the decade of the 80s and uh, through the mid-80s in the Eastern Michigan League. Now they have added again to uh, end our TV3 Game of the Week season. You can see it Wednesday, November 2nd at 6 and Saturday, November 5th at 1 o'clock. So we hope that you're with us all season long, not just here on Sports Scene 3, but also watching the Game of the Week. Also remember, every uh, other Monday night on TV3, we have Sports Scene Extra with myself, Matt York, Vic Michaels, for a live phone-in sports show where we can talk about anything from high schools to the pros. So TV3, indeed, your sports connection coming up for this season, and uh, we hope you're with us all year round. We'll certainly be here, and we will see you again in a couple weeks here on Sports Scene 3. So long, everyone. And also on the 16th, East Detroit and Stevenson battle to a scoreless tie in soccer action. Ryan Scheid, seven saves for East Detroit. Saturday, September 17th, St. Clement stayed undefeated with a 31-7 win over St. Alphonsus in gridiron action. Ron Slowinski, five-yard TD pass to Brian Wooters, opened the scoring for the Crusaders. Then Jeremy Ranieri from eight yards, Lenzel Jones from 60, and Tony Caruso from 22, all scored before the half for St. Clement. Ranieri added a 22-yard field goal as the Crusaders rolled in this one. Caruso, 11 carries, 110 yards on the ground. Jones, six carries. 76 yards and Damon Hopkins had five tackles, a pick and a fumble recovery for the Crusaders as they moved to 3 and 0 on the season. Cross country De La Salle Invitational, East Detroit finishes 9th in Boys Division 2, Centerline 9th in Boys Division 1. Ken Beginski, the lead runner for uh, those schools are Lady of the Lakes up in Waterford. Again, a team and a rivalry that has emerged over the last couple of years. St. Clement, though, gets the victory, and let's take a look at how they accomplished that. Crusaders get an early turnover in their favor. Casey McClory loses the football. Ian Lanovich stripped him of it. Brent Castouche in the recovery. They're able to cash in. Wasn't easy, though. Fourth down and five they face at the 25. Then Ron Slowinski swings it out. Jeremy Ranieri goes in for the touchdown. 7-0 Crusaders on their first possession of the ball game. Crusaders all year long have had the strong ground game. They had it again on Saturday. Tony Cruz, a third down conversion there. Moments later, another third down, another first down as Ranieri gets it for St. Clement. Now they face fourth and one at the 17-yard line. Caruso, he's stacked up. But wait, no, he's not. He bounces outside. Amazing run for Tony Caruso. 17-yard TD, 13-0 Crusaders. Early in the second, Lakes on the move. Scott Thomas' pass picked off by Jeremy Ranieri. Crusaders couldn't move on that possession, but they force Lakes into a punt again, and it'll be Ranieri coming up with the big play. Almost goes down to his knee, and of course, if the knee touches, you're down in high school football, but he was able to keep his balance. Sets up a big play on the return, and that sets up the third Crusader touchdown. Yet another third down conversion. Slowinski back, he'll find a wide open Paul Deluge. Seven yard TD toss, 19 nothing Crusaders. Lakers moving it now before the half. Thomas starts to find the range. He hits Tim Hasso to the Crusader 40-yard line. Moments later, Thomas will find his big tight end, Jeremy Payne, over the middle. And Payne will rumble down inside the 20, down to the 16-yard line. And that sets up Thomas, the quarterback, keeping it from a yard out over left tackle. It's 19-7, Crusaders at halftime. Now in the third, St. Clement trying to put some more points on the board. Slowinski will hit Brian Wooters into Lakes territory, but that drive ends up stalling. St. Clement defense, though, staying tough. Fourth and inches. Thomas able to get the first down on that sneak just barely, but on the very next play, Blaine Woodland and Damon Hopkins bury him for the sack. Crusaders still leading by 12, entering the fourth quarter. This is what gives coaches gray hairs. Fourth and two, and the guy jumps off sides. That kills that Lakes drive. Crusaders then put it away. Halfback option pass. Caruso 
perfect laid into Pastuchin. He will go all the way. It's an 81-yard touchdown play for St. Clement that locks up the victory 25-7 over Waterford. Our Lady of the Lakes Crusaders jump on top of the A East with an opening game victory. And St. Clement, of course, still with some work to do in the league, but they have their two toughest remaining games, Royal Oak Shrine and Redford St. Agatha, both at home. And both of them will be here on TV3. You won't want to miss that in the weeks to come. On Monday night, September the 26th, East Detroit under the lights and sock. Crusaders and the Royal Oak Shrine Knights. Hi, I'm Jerry Kaminsky. And with the rest of the TV3 crew, we'll be bringing you this one on a picture-perfect football evening here in mid-October. Boy, you couldn't have asked for a better night. Mild temperatures. There is quite a bit of a brisk wind out of the south that might come into play. Uh, the wind blowing from right to left across your screen tonight. And so uh, for a couple of quarters, of course, each team will be moving into a pretty good wind. As you look at According to the Detroit News, the number one team in the state this week in Class D, the St. Clement Crusaders. They are 5-0 coming into this one, 2-0 in the C section, and they'll face a test tonight against Royal Oak Shrine. The Knights are 4-1 overall, 1-1 in the league. The Knights only lost to Redford St. Agatha last week, as the Aggies are also 5-0. And, oh, and uh, next week, looking ahead one week, St. Clement and St. Agatha meet each other. The Catholic League C section, a very, very tough league this season besides these two teams on the field tonight and St. Agatha that we mentioned. Of course, Waterford, Our Lady of the Lakes, also a tough ball club. And in fact, tonight, St. Agatha and Waterford, Our Lady are also meeting on the gridiron. As we get underway here at St. Clement, Crusaders receive. It is dropped by Jones, then picked up. And he's going to be wrestled down inside the 15-yard line. So St. Clement will start in poor field position on the first series of the ball game. Stop was made on the 13, and that's where St. Clement will start first and 10. Your officials tonight, Mike Hessen is the referee. He's joined by Pat Coffey, Joe Marsinkowski, Mike Zilly, and Jeff Lawrence. Ron Slowinski, the Crusader quarterback, but they've done a lot of damage this year on the ground with Jeremy Ranieri, Tony Caruso, and Lenzel Jones, and the like. It's Caruso and Ranieri in the backfield, in the eye. Caruso, the up man. And Caruso got the handoff, and he's going to be stacked up after maybe a yard. Number 72, Anthony Angela Santo in on the stop, and he is a load, 6'4", 250. They gave Caruso a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Crusaders in their second year under Chris Bell. And of course, they have went to the Class D State semifinals the last two seasons have the Crusaders and looking for a return trip there this year. John Goddard, the head coach of Royal Oak Shrine. Caruso will keep up near the 20, about a five yard pickup. It'll still leave a third down and four for St. Clement. A long three. And it will bring up the game's first third down as you look at the Knights defensively. Number 70, Doug Brooks on the right side, and Angela Sano, 72, on the left side. A pair of big bookends on that defensive front. Caruso now the lone back on third down, and he'll get the toss. He'll turn it up this way, and he will drive and be close to the first down, and it looked like he was able to stretch and get it. Needed to get to about the 23 and a half. Looked like they're going to put it on the 24, and they will have the first down without a measurement. So Caruso has been the ball carrier on all three of the opening plays. St. Clement, the initial first down of the game. And they will have it first and 10. Ball on their own 25-yard line. As we said, this is the first of two straight games. We'll have St. Clement on the game of the week. Next week, it's Redford St. Agatha in what will again be a huge ball game in the Catholic League C section. 
in motion, Deluge. Give us to Ranieri for the first time. Oh, and he got popped. Check it, it was Lenzel Jones on the carry, and he got across the 25 for about three. It'll bring up second down. Second and seven for St. Clement. Wooters Ranieri into the St. Clement lineup now. Crusaders, as we said, ranked number one in the state this week by the Detroit News in Class D. Trying to keep their unbeaten record alive in their prep bowl bit, of course. Jones hauled down, nice open field tackle across the way, and it will bring up a third down and seven. It was Chris Swanson, number 88, who stopped him for a loss, and it will be third down now and eight. So we'll see if the Crusaders are put into a passing situation here on third down. As we said, most of their damage has come on the ground this year, but Slowinski can put it up. We've also, uh, a couple weeks ago, against the Lady of the Lakes Lakers saw a halfback option crew, so taking a pitch and throwing. Slowinski rolls, he'll throw this side, and it is incomplete, intended for Wooters, and it will bring up fourth down. St. Clement is going into the wind here in this first quarter. As we said, a fairly good south wind. But uh, that one, not one of Slowinski's better tosses, and it brings up fourth down. Ranieri into punt. Josh Daniels and Tim Neville, the deep men for the Knights. Ranieri gets off a good boot. Drives Neville to the 34. Comes up the right side, will have a flag and a clip call. And so that'll back the Knights off. They would have had good field position up around midfield, but the penalty thrown at about the 41, the clip will put the Knights back on about their own 26 yard line where they will start their initial possession. Mike Hessen will give us the call. And so that is where the Knights will start, first and 10, down just outside their own 25-yard line for their first possession of the ball game. Jim Naherniak, Dan Donnelly, Mark Dixon on the crew tonight for TV3. Glad you're with us. And uh, after this, of course, we've got homecomings coming up next week, East Detroit and St. Clement on the same weekend. Center line about a week later. Kevin Parcell, the quarterback, and he busted play, and he'll now roll this way, and he's going to be buried by a sea of green. Blaine Woodland, Damon Hopkins, Rick Stakely also there, uh, Tony Caruso as well. A loss of about a half yard, and it will bring up second down and call it still 10 for the Knights. Josh Daniels out wide right on second down. They'll give to the second man through. And a gain of about seven, that's Kevin Cooch, number 34. Out across to the 32 yard line. It'll bring up third down and three. Wooters on the stop for the Crusaders. And the Knights now will face a first down. As you look at the Crusaders and their new unis this year for the football team as well, the big change in the pants. Last year, of course, they were basically white. And this year, they've gone to that Notre Dame gold, Georgia Tech gold. And, and they've got those throwback socks like the Lions had on the throwback game, the high socks uh, in the green, of course. And uh, Shrine not going anywhere on third down. Crusaders and a fumble on the play, and St. Clement recovers at the 30-yard line. Number 54, Matt Daniels, with the fumble recovery for St. Clement. And that'll give them great field position at the Shrine 30-yard line, first and 10. So a plunge up the middle gets nothing, and in fact yields the fumble for Shrine.
behind St. Clement with the game's first turnover and the game's first scoring chance now down inside Shrine territory. Wooters wide right on first down. Slowinski will hand to the up man. Caruso just busts through the middle and he's down close to a St. Clement first down. Darnell Jordan on the stop, but Caruso got nine and a half and it'll be second and very short for St. Clement. Wooters again will come wide right. Brian Pestuchin to the left. His brother Brent Pestuchin tight end to the right side. On second and short. Slowinski and Caruso run into each other. Now the pitch to Jones on the option. He'll, he'll have the first down inside the 20. Mix up in the backfield, but the Crusaders able to get three out of it and the first down at the 17 yard line. Their second first down of the ball game. Number 57, Bob Bernanke, the center, leading the Crusaders out. Ian Lanovic, Rich Stakely, as we have a flag down also on that offensive front along with, as they're going to have an encroachment call against Shrine, the first penalty of the ball game, make it first down and five now. 75, John Cantilla also along the front for St. Clement. And David Burkett, number 65 as well. And as we said, Pestuchin, Brent Pestuchin, 81, the tight end. Lined up left this time. On first and five from just outside the 11, it's Caruso slashing off tackle, still on his feet. And he will be very close to another Crusader first down. Be about a yard shy, and once again, it'll be second and short for St. Clement. Four yard gain, Caruso now five carries, 23 yards. And we do have a timeout for a measurement with 4.02 left in the quarter is the St. Clement Crusader cheerleaders, always one of the best in the Catholic League. And Caruso does indeed get the first down. So the Crusaders looking to take advantage of the Knights turnover, have a first and goal on the six now. In a very quick moving first quarter, we're inside of four minutes. Slowinski calling the play, gives it to Woodland, and he is run down right there. Nothing doing as Darnell Jordan brought him down, lost maybe a yard, and it'll be second and goal now from the, still call it the six. He got back to the line of scrimmage. So second down, six Crusaders. Short game, second down. Pestuchin out wide left, Wooters wide right. You have Woodland and Jones in the backfield. And again, they'll go strong side on the pitch. Jones, he lost the ball and it goes out of bounds, fortunately for St. Clement. Right about the one. It was met by Kutch. And that'll bring up a third and goal. Cooch met him as Jones picks up five. Third down and less than a yard now. Delugi, number 17, checks in, as does Caruso for St. Clement. Very fortunate, St. Clement, that that ball rolled out of bounds without rolling through the end zone. Full house backfield now on third and short. Caruso, he's stacked up. Nothing doing, it'll bring up fourth down. Great stand there led by Chris Swanson, number 88. And it'll be fourth and goal, St. Clement. And Chris Bell will have the game's first decision as he lost about a half a yard. All about the one yard line. 
Wooters comes in, 234 and rolling first quarter, and now we will have a St. Clement timeout. As Chris Bell and his staff want to talk about this one with 232 to go in a scoreless first quarter. Boy, great penetration by Swanson of the Knights to stand Caruso up there. And it'll bring up fourth and goal from the one. Gotta assume that St. Clement will go for it. That would be a tough angle field goal. And again, you're down on the one yard line. Even if you fail, Shrine going to be backed up deep in their own territory. Well, of course, one of the things on the line all season long in the Catholic League is the prep bowl played at the Pontiac Silverdome over the last weekend in October. St. Clement looking for a berth there. They went a couple years ago. Waterford, Our Lady of the Lakes went out of the C-section last year. Crusaders would love to get back to the dome and the prep bowl this season. And it is a great day of football down at the Silverdome. Encourage everyone to go on out. Walk some great ball. Fourth down now, goal to go. Ranieri and Caruso in the eye. Play fake, Slowinski has a man wide open. Touchdown, St. Clement. That's Ranieri out of the backfield. Great play call by Chris Bell and the Crusaders and executed perfectly by Slowinski. Ranieri making the catch, Crusaders go up 6-0. With 2.25 left in the opening quarter, Slowinski's first completion of the game goes for six. And the kick is good, and the Crusaders take a 7 nothing lead. Well, the one yard toss on fourth down and goal from Slowinski to Ranieri, giving St. Clement the advantage as they capitalize on the Royal Oak Shrine turnover. The fumble that gave St. Clement the ball at the 31, they're able to take it in for the touchdown and the early lead. Crusaders have been able to jump out early on most teams this year. Last week, however, against St. Florian, they found themselves trailing 7-6 in the ball game, a spot they had not been in all year before coming back to win rather handily over Florian. be Caruso to kick it off as the Knights will get the ball for the second time. St. Clement has run now 13 plays to Shrine's three. Of course, Shrine with that fumble on their first possession, ending their drive and leading to the St. Clement touchdown. Crusoe's kick a good one. It'll drive Daniels back to his own 11. He dropped it, picked it up, and he's in a world of hurts now. Lenzel Jones, the first one down there, and Heath Glovac also down quickly. And it is Shrine's ball first and 10 on their own 14 yard line. First and 10 from their own 15 yard line. Take a look at the Knights, who have not had a chance to run much of their offense so far here in the first quarter as we're inside two minutes to go in the opening stanza. Full house behind Parcells, the wishbone. Parcells options this way, and he's hit and stuck by Damon Hopkins. Got a yard out to the 15, and that's all. It'll be second down. And nine. Oh, 
St. Clement, as we said, they've been to the Class D semis the last two years. They've been in the state playoffs the last three. Lost to Waterford Our Lady of the Lakes three years ago in the opening round. Lost to Portland St. Patrick in the semis as we have flags down both of the last two years. And it's motion on the Knights, and that will bring up, still second down, but second down will make it 14 now, back at the 10-yard line. So the Knights now face second down and long. Daniels wide to the near side. And we've got offsides. It looked like Woodland that time for St. Clement number three. Came across into the neutral zone, and so that'll just put it back where we were at second down and nine up at the 14 yard line. With 59 seconds and rolling now in the first quarter. In motion, Cooch, short drop, Parcel over the middle, overthrows the tight end, Swanson, and it will bring up third down. So third down and nine for the Knights from their own 15-yard line, 49 seconds in the quarter. They do have the win right now with them in the quarter, so if they are forced to punt, they will at least have the wind when they kick the ball away. Overloading to the left on third down. Parcells though will bootleg right on the option, kicks it out, and it will be a first down for the Knights across the 25 to the 27. Cooch on the carry, picks up 13 on it, and a Royal Oak Shrine first down. Well, they overloaded left, ran misdirection right. Nice job by the Knights on that one. Shrine's initial first down of the ball game. First and 10 at the 27. 25 seconds left opening quarter. Pro set now behind Parcel. Oh, and Cooch is met head on. Check it, it was Brent Pastuchin who made the hit, and it was good courage on the carry. No gain as the first quarter will come to an end. And after one, a quick moving quarter, it's a one yard touchdown pass from Slowinski to Ranieri on fourth and goal that has given St. Clement the lead. After one, St. Clement leads it seven to nothing. As we said, the prep bowl coming up at the end of October at the Pontiac Silverdome. All the divisions of the Catholic League get together for a great day of football. Something to see down at the Silverdome. St. Clement hoping to be there. Royal Oak Shrine, of course, still with a chance. As we said, it's a great race in the Catholic League C section. Next week on Game of the Week, we have a homecoming doubleheader. The East Detroit Shamrocks take on Warren Cousineau in a game key to Cousineau's chances for a MAC Blue Division championship. And of course, East Detroit homecoming also. Dr. Jerry Leninger, uh, who went up on the space shuttle just discovery last month, going to be the Grand Marshal of the parade and the homecoming activities. And so you'll want to be with us for that one. And then a big game here at Centerline Memorial. St. Clement against St. Agatha, and if both the Crusaders and Aggies get victories tonight, they'll both come in 6-0, and oh, both be ranked in the top five probably in the state in Class D, and it will be a whale of a game, for more than likely a prep bowl berth also on the line in the ball game. So that is assuming things break right tonight for the Crusaders and the Aggies. Cook stopped for nothing. Woodland was in there, it was 
well as others, and it will be third down and 11. Timeout. Knights. So Shrine, Coach John Goddard, wants to talk it over on a third and 11 coming up from their own 26. And remember here in the second quarter now, it'll be the Knights going into the win. Laura Urban, one of the student managers out with the team and the Crusaders have proven themselves tough all season long under coach Chris Bell. They, one of the finest programs in the area is witnessed by the team's success in the last few years. Third down and 11 now as Parcell rolls left, keeps it, cuts it up field, still on his feet and gonna be dragged down about five yards shy though of the first down. Daniels dragged him down around the ankles. Hopkins gave him some help and it will be fourth and five from up around the 33 in the Knights. We'll have to kick it away. And we have a whistle and a referee Mike Hessen stopping. We've got an official's timeout. Got an injured night player, William Martell, number 35, limping off the field. Daniels deep to punt. And it is Ranieri deep to receive for St. Clement. Kick will hit at midfield and just bounce into St. Clement territory, another four yards. So after a short kick, Crusaders will set up in good position, first and 10 at their own 46 yard line. 10.44 in the first half, it is St. Clement seven. And Royal Oak Shrine, nothing. Ranieri slowing, coming off the field. He has not carried the ball yet. Jeremy must be nursing a little bit of an injury. Is Caruso not in also right now? Single back behind Switalski on first down, three wide outs. They'll pitch it to Jones. Jones has room this side, got a nice block from Wooters contained. And Jones will have a first down to the 42 yard line. Lenzel Jones pickup of 11. He now five carries, 21 yards. Got a great job from Brian Wooters on the block that helped him turn it inside upfield for the first down. Wooters goes now wide right, Pestuchin wide left. Caruso and Jones behind Switalski. First man, Caruso, and he's dragged down right there, fell forward for maybe a yard. It was Cooch who made the stop, and it will be second down and nine. Knight's getting good penetration up the middle, but St. Clement so far been able to take it around the ends on the Knights. We'll see what they do here on second down. High back of Switalski again. He'll roll right, pitch to Jones. Knights have some containment and Jones gains about three. Nice job by Switalski waiting to the last possible moment before pitching and Jones able to get three. Cooch Neville on the stop. It'll be third down though and still now six for St. Clement. From the 38 yard line, third down six Crusaders, eight and a half to go in the first half. Jones coming off the field. Single back Caruso, back of Switalski on third down. Straight drop, 
Swings it out this side and it is caught by Ranieri. Going to be about two yards shy of the first down. Up at the 34, it'll bring up fourth down and a long two. So a four yard pickup. So Tolski now two of three, five yards through the air. Both completions to Ranieri. And the Crusaders going to go on fourth down at the 34 yard line. They're one for one on fourth down conversions in the game. Well, now they line up and kick it. Ranieri going to punt it away. See if the Crusaders pull a fake out here. Fourth and two from the 34 of Shrine. They do fake Caruso, and he will have the first down. A Shrine saying the ball popped loose, and no into. Yes, it did. Now we get the indication from the official. Fumble on the play. Caruso had the first down, but coughed it up. Shrine recovers, and the Knights will have it first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Well, turnovers now even at one apiece as the Crusaders, after working the fake punt to Caruso, lose the football first down shrine at their own 28. Parcel in motion is Neville, and we have flags down. St. Clement also jumped, but we'll see if he was drawn off. And it does look like that's going to be the case. Third penalty on the Knights. All of the little five-yard type, but they add up, and it'll be first down 15. Back on the 23. Seven minutes left in the first half, a 7-0. St. Clement lead. Shrine was defeated 10 nothing by Agatha last week. So they're looking to get their offense back on track after opening the season with four consecutive victories. Cooch, left side, bounces out, still on his feet. And Caruso finally runs him down after a gain of about three. It'll bring up second down and 12. Cooch 22 yards on four carries now. Second down still long for the Knights. They've picked up one first down in the ball game. And it's Cooch again and he's got a hole and he's got a first down and then some. Tripped up near the 40. Jones got the hand in there to trip him up, and then making sure was Brian Wooters. But again, out to the 39-yard line, and a Shrine first down. Thirteen for Cooch. He's got 35 now on five carries. First and 10 Knights at the 39. First man and goes nowhere. Neither team able really to do much so far up the middle. It is a loss of a couple, loss of a yard to Lugi on the stop. And it brings up second down and 11. Daniels will go wide left. In motion, Cooch. Parcel, play action. He's being pressured. He's rolling this way, and now we will just throw it, and it is caught by Cooch at midfield, and he has a seam up to the 41-yard line. Well, Parcel able to find Cooch after scrambling out of trouble, a 21-yard pickup to the 20 to the 41 of St. Clement, and the Knights on the move for the first time in the ball game. First and 10 in St. Clement territory at the 41. Nice job by Parcel, and an excellent job by Kevin Cooch to come back to his quarterback. 
and get himself open for the catch. Overload right side, see if they run left as they did earlier in the game. No, they go right, and Cooch is just hammered by Woodland. Wayne Woodland put the hammer to him, Brent Festuchen there as well, but it's a loss of a couple, and it will be second down and 12. Big time hit by Blaine Woodland. Second and 12 for the Knights now from the 43 of St. Clement, full house. And now moving to the left is Neville in the slot. They go back to the eye behind Parcell. He'll play fake. Back to throw, looking deep down the middle and overthrows everyone and almost intercepted by Wooters down in the dirt part of the infield. And he'll bring up third down and 12. Third down. Third and 12 now, Knights from the St. Clement 43. As Shrine trying to capitalize on a St. Clement fumble, Willie Martell 35 in with the play. 337 left in the first half. Crusaders on top, seven to nothing. Daniels now swings wide left and Martell in the slot. And he moved and now we have flags. And that'll back Shrine up five and make it third down 17 now. Fourth flag against the Knights. And it'll be third down, and as we said now, close to 17 for Shrine. Football back at the, uh, the 49, so closer to 18 now for the Knights on third down. Daniels out left. Swanson, the tight end, will move left as well as Neville in the slot. They'll hand it to Cooch. Cooch tries to find a hole, and he is met right away after a gain of maybe a yard. Hopkins was there for St. Clement, as was Stakely, and it'll bring up fourth down and 17. Gain of just one on the play. And the Knights will have to kick it away with 310 left in the half. Daniels to punt it. Got Brian Wooters back to receive for St. Clement this time. Here come the Crusaders, kick away a high floater into that wind. Not gonna go too far. Punting into the wind and it is down at about the 26 yard line, just a 22 yard kick. And so St. Clement will start there. 252 in the half. They lead 7-0, first and 10 on their own 26. Remember St. Clement, two timeouts left. They used one earlier in the ball game before the fourth down touchdown pass on fourth and goal from the one. And we'll see what St. Clement has in store here with 240 and rolling in the half, ball on their own 26 yard line. See if Slowinski starts going to the air. He does have the wind at his back. Keep it on the ground on first down. Jones, he's stacked up at the 30. Gain of about four, and it'll be second down and six. Jordan in on the stop, as well as Kevin Sanders. Ten carries, 36 yards. And two minutes and rolling here in the half. Cruz Owing Jones still back of Slowinski. Slowinski will hand again to the first man, Caruso, who will be very close to a first down. It'll depend on the spot. Spurgeon on the stop, and he does have it. A gain of six for a first down. Clock stops momentarily while they move the chains. Now rolls again with a minute 40 in the half. Remember St. Clement with two timeouts remaining. Pestuchin, Wooters, and Woodland now line up trips right. Lone back Jones behind Slowinski. And Slowinski straight back. Rolling right, being chased out of the pocket. He's got some room, 
He'll keep and get out of bounds up at around the 44 with a minute 13 to play in the half. A gain of about eight. And it will bring up second down and closer to three, well, second and two call it, an eight yard pickup for Slowinski. His first carry tonight. Second down two from the 44. Ranieri now back into the St. Clement lineup. Again, with 1.13 in the half, St. Clement a seven nothing lead. They do have the two timeouts remaining. And of course, the clock does stop momentarily on first downs to move the chains as well. Ranieri and Jones in the backfield. They faked, Slowinski keeps, and he goes nowhere. Knight's not fooled by the fake to Jones, and it will bring up third down. And now we will have a timeout. Anthony Angela Santo was in on the stop, so was Brooks and Jordan. And it will be third down after the gain of nothing. Timeout by St. Clement, their second. So it'll be third down and two, St. Clement, a minute one left here in the first half. Crusaders with a seven nothing lead on the one yard, fourth down and goal touchdown toss from Slowinski to Ranieri. Look across the way at the Knights of Royal Oak Shrine. As we said, just a gorgeous, gorgeous night for football here in the first part of October, and hopefully our luck will hold out for another couple of weeks, especially next weekend when we've got that homecoming doubleheader Saturday and Sunday here on TV3. East Detroit's homecoming on Saturday. St. Clement homecoming on Sunday. Watch the TV3 schedule for the dates and times that those games will be on. St. Clement now facing third down and two from their own 44 with a minute one left in the half. They have one timeout remaining. Well, one back behind Slowinski is Jones. Quick drop, flares it out to Ranieri. Ranieri got a block from Wooters, has Pastuchin downfield, and he's in the open. Ranieri shoved out of bounds around the 20 yard line, but it is a St. Clement first down deep into Shrine territory, pushed out by Tim Neville, but it is a 36 yard pickup for Ranieri as they just flared it out to him and with Wooters and Brent Pastuchin in front of him, Ranieri able to carry all the way down to the 20 and importantly also got pushed out of bounds to stop the clock with 52 seconds remaining. Wooters and Pastuchin now go wide right. Russo and Jones behind Slowinski. Ranieri, all three catches, uh, all three completions that Slowinski has thrown. They swing it, that's a lateral to Wooters. He's trying to get a block and he does not, and he does not get out of bounds either at the 15 yard line, a gain of five. And it will bring up second down, clock running, 35 seconds left. Down now to 30, second and five. Slowinski, short drop, three step, goes end zone, overthrows Pastuchin incomplete. And with 23 seconds left, it brings up a third down and five from the Shrine 15 yard line. Pastuchin now four out, or uh, check it, Slowinski now four out of six, 46 yards through the air. Three of those catches have been made by Jeremy Ranieri. Third and five Crusaders. Football at the Shrine 15 yard line, 23 seconds remaining first half. St. Clement does have one timeout remaining. Caruso the lone back. Pastuchin, here come the Knights, look out. Nice job by Caruso to pick up the blind side, thrown and incomplete. Just a little bit behind Wooters sliding across. Slowinski, good job to get it off in the face of Kevin Sanders' rush, and it'll bring up fourth down. Thrown just a tad behind Wooters, sliding in the end zone. And it is fourth down and five with 16 seconds left in the half. 
And we will have Tony Caruso on for a field goal attempt of what will be 32 yards from the right hash. He'll have the wind at his back. Knights brought everyone on that third down. Caruso's kick is blocked. Ranieri falls on it at the 26-yard line. And so the Knights able to come away with a big defensive stand after Ranieri rumbled down to the 20 on that swing pass. We also had offside on St. Clement anyway. That's, of course, declined. And the Knights will start first and 10 at their own 26. Clock rolling. They might not even run a play. Just go to the half 7-0 and regroup. And it looks like that is what? is going to happen. And so at the end of the first half of play from Memorial Field in Centerline, it is St. Clement, seven. Royal Oak Shrine, nothing. Hey, stay with us. We'll be back with the second half right after this. back to Centerline Memorial Field. We're at halftime of this Catholic League C-section battle. St. Clement leading Royal Oak Shrine seven to nothing. Let's take a look at the first half scoring summary and stats. The only touchdown of the game coming late in the first quarter. A fourth and goal from the Shrine one. Ron Slowinski with a one yard toss to Jeremy Ranieri. The point after good St. Clement up seven nothing and that's where we stand at halftime. And look, taking a look at those stats, the Crusaders 71 yards rushing, 46 passing, 117 total yards, four first downs. They have turned the ball over one time. And for Royal Oak Shrine in that first half, unofficially 40 yards rushing, 21 passing, 61 total yards, three first downs, and they also turned the ball over once. Their turnover leading to the St. Clement touchdown. A 7-0 lead for the Crusaders. Tony Caruso, 11 carries, 42 yards in that first half for St. Clement. Kevin Kutch, 7 carries, 34 yards, leading the way for the Knights. St. Clement coming into this one 5-0, 2-0 in the league. Royal Oak Shrine entering it at 4-1, 1-1 in the league as the C-section race continues to be a good one. Earlier we said that Redford, St. Agatha, and Waterford, Our Lady of the Lakes were playing tonight as well. They, in fact, play tomorrow as we speak on Saturday. And in fact, Coach Mike Boyd of uh, Lakes down here walks in game, and along with some of Lakes players, saw them at halftime. And as we said, that's a big game tomorrow for those two squads. St. Agatha is also undefeated at 5-0 and 2-0. and and these St. Clement Crusaders meet Redford St. Agatha next week here at Memorial in the Crusader homecoming football game that we will have for you on TV3. We'll also have East Detroit's homecoming game next week against Warren Cousineau. And the centerline Panthers, of course, hoping to rebound from a loss that they suffered to Avondale last week that dropped them a game out of first place in the Macomb Oakland Athletic Conference. And they are now in sixth place center line in Class B Region 4 for state playoff points. The top four in each region make it. Their homecoming game against Madison will be a big one in that regard. Madison, one of the teams ahead of them still, and for St. Clement right here, they are number one in Class D Region 4, and uh, they have a lock on a playoff spot, uh, do the Crusaders. And they are playing, of course, just to get that number one seed. And that game against St. Agatha will be a very critical game for that regard as well. St. Clement will kick to Shrine to begin the second half. Crusaders 
lone score, and the lone score of the game came on a short 31-yard drive, as we said, after a Shrine fumble. Crusaders had something else going near the end of the half, a fake punt, in fact, also by the Crusaders. Had them a first down, but Caruso fumbled after uh, on his way being brought down after the fake punt in Shrine territory, and the Knights recovered. And then late in the half as well, a big gain by Jeremy Ranieri on a pass from Slowinski got the Crusaders down to the night 20. They moved to the 15, but a 32-yard field goal attempt by Caruso was blocked on the final play of the half. Try now will start first and 10 at their own 30-yard line to open this third quarter. First and 10 for the Knights. We had a very quick paced, well played first half. Five penalties, four against Shrine, all of the five yard variety. St. Clement also had one, four, five yards. And both teams doing most of their damage on the ground, although the Crusaders, of course, had the one yard touchdown pass and also a 36 yard pass on a swing out for Ranieri. Gain of a few for Kutch. And it will bring up second down and seven. Call it eight. Gain of just two, they spot it. St. Clement has been very tough defensively this season. They have not allowed more than one touchdown in any ball game in their first five. Crusaders showing blitz. Now drop off as it is Kutch who's going to be brought down in the backfield. Number 53, Rick Stakely. Got in there and grabbed him around the ankles, didn't let go until he got help, and it'll be third down and 11. Call it 12 after a loss of four. So third and 12 now for the Knights on the first possession of the second half. Parcell in the first half, one of three, 21 yards through the air, that completion to Kutch. And a play where Parcell rolled near side here in trouble, and Kutch did a good job of coming back to the football. Third down 12 now from their own 28 yard line. Parcell drops straight back, looks over the middle and under throws his man at the 40 incomplete. That was Neville and it'll bring up fourth down. Would have had the first down, but the pass just a bit underthrown and on fourth and 12 the Knights will have to kick it away into the wind. Shrine moving left to right on the screen and into the wind, a south wind here in this third quarter. Ranieri will drop deep for St. Clement. Hopkins also as a short man. As Daniels has not been able to get much foot punting into the wind, and he won't that time either off the side of his foot. And it takes a St. Clement bounce all the way back to the 33-yard line. That ends up being a five-yard punt, and St. Clement will have first down and 10 at the Shrine 33. Oh boy, that's almost the same as a turnover there. St. Clement had a 31-yard touchdown drive in the first half, as we said, after a Shrine fumble. Now after just a five-yard punt, they have it first and 10 at the night 33-yard line. Wooters wide right, as well as Ranieri going out right. Lone back Caruso behind Slowinski. Pestuchin at the bottom of the screen left. And Slowinski will give to Caruso, who is stacked up by Angela Santo. Caruso is covered by Angela Santo. Maybe one, and it'll be second down. I'll tell you, Angela, Anthony Angela Santo, 6'4", 250, and he is agile as well. He plays on the Knights basketball team, did last year at least also. And he is a big, agile man. Second down and still call it about 10 for the Crusaders. Again, Caruso the lone back. He'll get the deep pitch. And he has room right side, trying to get outside, drag down around the 26-yard line. And it will bring up a third down. 
Neri had the block for him on the outside, but it will be third down and still about three as the Knights strung it out well. Still a pickup of six for Tony, who now has 49 yards on 13 carries. Third down three from the Knights' 26-yard line as Caruso comes out now. Woodland and Wooters wide left. Jones now the lone back on third and three. Double tight for St. Clement. Jones gets the pitch, finds a seam, and has a first down. Down to about the 22, gain of four, and that will be enough for a St. Clement first down. Russo will come back in now, as will Brian Pastuchin. First and 10, St. Clement, eight, 10 left third quarter. They're on their first drive of the game, taking over in great field position after a short Royal Oak Shrine punt. Caruso and Jones in the eye, back of Slowinski. And it is Caruso on the carry. Tries to bounce outside and gets hauled down after maybe getting a yard. Nice pursuit by the Knights. They clogged up the middle, forced Caruso outside, and it was Kevin Sanders there making sure he didn't get much farther. Swanson also on the stop. Nothing there for Caruso, and it will bring up a second down and 10. Well, if you watched the highlights of the uh, St. Clement Waterford Our Lady game, a very similar play to that Caruso on a fourth and one though, stopped up the middle and just bounced it out outside for a 13 yard touchdown run. That time there was nothing doing. Deep pitch Ranieri and he has room right side, a ton of it, and he will have a first down to about the 10 yard line. All sorts of room right side for Ranieri on the pitch as the Knights bid on the fake to Woodland. And it will be a first down at about the 11. Give Ranieri 11. And a first down for the Crusaders. Down now at the 11 yard line. That is Ranieri as he trots off the field. That's the first carry of the game for Jeremy that uh, we have recorded here. He has caught three passes but he has uh, come off the field, he's hurting again. We didn't see him much in the backfield in that first half. First down, Caruso busts it down to about the three. And St. Clement starting to assert themselves on the ground here in the third quarter as they've done most of the season against ball clubs. They just grind it out and grind it out on you. Second down three, they spotted on the four. Nearing the midway mark of this third quarter. Woodland will be the up back. Caruso the deep back behind Slowinski now on second and three. Caruso left side again and he is in not yet no call he stopped up at about the half yard line boy that hole closed quickly it looked like Caruso could have walked in but the Knights good job to close it up quickly that'll be close to a first down but not quite St. Clement can get a first down without scoring just barely and it will be third down now for St. Clement and about a yard for a score and about a half a yard for a first down. They can get the first down without scoring. Caruso and Woodland again in the backfield. Wouldn't be surprised just to see Caruso again get it right up the gut. Now it's Slowinski keeping and there is a flag down. It looked like the right side of the Crusader line moved early. We'll wait for the call, dead ball, and it is going to be that. That right side just hopped up a little bit out of their stance early. And they had a crucial penalty. Instead of third and less than a yard, now you bring up third and about five and a half back on the six. Just the second penalty of the ball game against St. Clement, but that one did not come at a good time for Coach Chris Bell and the Crusaders. Well, we'll see if they run some sort of play action or rollout now on third down and five from the six.
to Lewinsky, calling the signals. And he will roll right. Pitch on the option. Ranieri trying to turn the corner, heads for the pylon, and did not get it. But he might have a first down. Look at the spot, and it's going to be very close. Remember, they could get a first down without scoring, and it doesn't look like they have it by the spot there. Ranieri got the five back, but it's going to be fourth down and short again, it looks. And so St. Clement, one more time, just like on their first touchdown in the game's only score so far, will face fourth down and very short inside the one-yard line. Mike Hessen, with, he brought the tape measure out there to make sure he spotted the ball correctly. Timeout now, St. Clement. So almost, I tell you what Mike did. He uh, took the tape measure out, measured it from the goal line over on the far side, and then made sure he placed it the same way on the right hash here. And it is fourth down. Again, St. Clement can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. But it would be pretty darn difficult, let me tell you. Fourth down and in inches from inside the one. And as we said, almost the exact situation as we had in the first quarter when St. Clement got their touchdown. They faced a fourth and goal from the one. On that occasion, they had Slowinski throw a little swing out to Ranieri wide open in the flat for the touchdown. This time, we'll see what Chris Bell comes up with for St. Clement. I wouldn't be surprised to see him just pound it on this one. Slowinski snuck a couple plays back, but that was called back with the penalty. Of course, you've got big Tony Caruso. As you see, Ranieri getting worked on on the sidelines. Jeremy apparently was banged up coming into this ball game, and uh, he has done a good job when he's been in there tonight. Okay, here we go, fourth down. Let's see if they just do give it to Caruso and try to let him bang it in. They go full house again behind Slowinski as they did in the first quarter in this same situation. It's Woodland, Deluge, and Caruso behind Slowinski. 4.43 left in the third quarter. St. Clement leading seven, nothing. Touchdown here would be huge. Give them a two touchdown lead on the Knights in a game that the defenses have played quite well. Slowinski keeps, I don't know. There's no signal for a touchdown, but now it depends on the spot for the first down because he did not get in. Slowinski did not get in, but now the thing is, does he get the first down and will St. Clement have four more cracks at it from about the one foot line and will have the timeout for the measurement. Well, this is a big spot for both ball clubs. He didn't get it. Great goal line stand by the Royal Oak Shrine Knights. As they stand Slowinski up, they end up holding the Crusaders. And Shrine will get it first and 10 on about their own one foot line with 440, 435 left here in the third quarter. St. Clement still with a seven, nothing lead. And now if you're the Knights, you just gotta try to wedge it out on first down at least and get yourself a little bit of room to work with. No mistakes here if you're the Knights, or it's a quick two points against you. See if Parcell just keeps it himself to wedge it out, he does. And Parcell gets it out to about the three. Not a bad surge by the Knights there. And it'll bring up second down and about seven at the, at the four. Parcell got almost uh, three yards there. So the Knights now at least a couple yards to work with on second down. They are going into the wind though again, remember, here in the third quarter. And if St. Clement can come up with a stop here down on this series of downs, they should get the ball in tremendous field position again if they force the Knights to punt because the Knights have not been able to do much punting into the wind. Crusaders showing blitz again. Parcel right up, and he found a hole and is close to a first down. Well, Bill Parcel, a couple of big runs there. He's about a yard shy. It'll be third down and one. 
Kevin Parcel. If I called him Bill, I knew I'd do that at least once tonight. Third and short for the Knights now, just inside their own 10 yard line. They have to get just across the 10 for the first down after the big goal line stand that the Knights defense came up with. See if Parcel just keeps it one more time, he does. And I don't know if he got it that time. He wedged off the right side, and again, it'll just all depend on the spot. He had to get a, about a football length past the 10, and they first give it to him, first down, Shrine. So Kevin Parcell just keeps it three times himself, gets the first down for Royal Oak Shrine. Out to the 11-yard line, now the Knights have a little bit of room to work with 2.20 left in the third. A seven to nothing, St. Clement lead. here on a perfect Friday night in October. This St. Clement's only Friday night game all season long. They normally play on Saturday afternoons as Kutch gets the call and gets a few. Kutch carrying the ball. He was not out there. And it will bring up easy. second down and about seven. Maybe six, four yard pickup. So the Crusaders under the lights, as we said, for the only time this season. Or under the lights on a Friday night, at least, for the only time. They do play Saturday night games, but they are on a Friday this week. As Parcel rolls out, he'll keep flag down in the backfield where you'd expect either a hold or a clip, and it is a hold on the Knights. Parcel got maybe a yard, so the Crusaders will take the penalty, and it'll stay second down, but bring up second down, and uh, about 17 as they'll mark it half the distance from the spot of the foul. So it'll be second down and long for the Knights as the football will move back to the six-yard line. Second down and 14. A minute 10 left now in the third quarter. Knights break out of the huddle on second and long, still deep in their own territory. Inside a minute in the third. Parcell, second man through, and up to about the 10, and that's all for Cutch, and it'll be third down, and now back to 10. Clutch, off the left side, met by Caruso and Rivlin. Third and 10 now for the Knights. 17 seconds and rolling. If the Knights get held here, the quarter should run out if they don't put the ball in the air. In fact, they might not even run a play in the quarter. And that would, at the very least, let the Knights punt with the wind at their backs as we head toward the fourth and after three quarters of play here at Memorial. It is still St. Clement seven and Royal Oak Shrine nothing. Well, as we said, the prep bowl coming up the final weekend in October at the Pontiac Silverdome, and both these teams hope to be there. The game next week between St. Clement and St. Agatha going to go a long way towards seeing who gets to the dome representing the C section. It's a great day of football out at the Silverdome. You can contact the Catholic League offices for more information and ticket information. And that uh, St. Clement, St. Agatha game next week, homecoming for St. Clement, and we said we'll have it for you on TV3. And there's a lot of activities for homecoming as well, especially on Sunday, the day of the game. 10 o'clock is the homecoming mass at St. Clement Church here on, or down there on Van Dyke, not quite here on Van Dyke. 
At noon uh, is the float jogging behind the Knights of Columbus. One o'clock, the parade begins. 2.30 kickoff, St. Clement and St. Agatha. There's Father Jacoby, the pastor of St. Clement Parish, and I'm sure he will be the priest at the homecoming mass next Sunday. And then at 4.30 uh, after the game Sunday is the alumni afterglow at uh, Sandbaggers on Van Dyke. Fourth quarter underway on third and long for the Knights. Parcel on the pitch and it's going nowhere. So the Crusaders come up big defensively and they'll force the Knights to keep, kick from deep in their own territory. They will have the wind at their back as it is fourth down and 11. Daniels will be in to kick. He's had a tough time punting into the wind tonight. We'll see what he can do with the wind at his back. Got off just a five yarder last time into the wind. Wooters back deep for St. Clement. And now we'll have a timeout called by Shrine. Shrine. And the winning ticket has been. Well, they did have, uh, might not have had uh, the right personnel on the field. They had 11 people out there, but it doesn't look like they had the right personnel on the field. And so they burn a timeout with 11.22 left in the fourth quarter in this ball game. So you look at some of the crowd that is here tonight. It was parents' night here at St. Clement tonight. And then earlier before the game, the parents were introduced along with the players, both of the football team, the managers, and the cheerleaders. St. Clement should come out of this exchange with good field position. Wooters, the deep man, is going to stand inside the 50. In fact, he's just at the Shrine 42-yard line awaiting the kick from Daniels. Crusaders come after it, and Daniels gets off a beauty. Drives Wooters back, and he'll let it go. And this is going to roll dead all the way down at the 29-yard line. 61 yards. It was cut on the punt. A 61-yard kick to the Crusader 29-yard line. Oh, that is a big, big play by the special teams of Royal Oak Shrine as Chris Bell sends his quarterback, Ron Slowinski, out onto the field. Crusaders were looking to get possession inside Shrine territory. Instead, they're back at their own 29-yard line after a 61-yard kick. Jones and Caruso, the deep backs behind Slowinski. We've had a defensive battle here tonight. 7-0 St. Clement, early fourth quarter. It is Caruso, the first man, and he gets three, and that's about all. Bring up second down and seven. Big number 77, Darnell Jordan, getting up off the bottom of the pile. 17 carries, 62 yards for Caruso. He's carrying the load tonight for St. Clement. Pestution and Wooters go wide left, as does Woodland. Caruso again, the lone back, as the wind picking up. Crusaders going into that wind here in the fourth. Caruso, the toss right, being run down from behind. It is Nick LaGrasse, number 67, and was able to corral him. And it'll bring up third down and five. So third and a little less than five, call it four for St. Clement from the 36. They have to get just shy of their own 40 with 9.25 to play in the football game. Crusaders clinging to a 7-0 lead, would like to put some more points on the board. Slowinski back, rolling this way, getting good protection, but now there's a flag down. Slowinski in the open, into night territory, all the way to the 41, but it's going to come back, holding on St. Clement. 
Well, Slowinski was getting great protection and apparently a little bit too good as referee Mike Hessen detects the holding in the backfield, and that is a big penalty for St. Clement. Instead of having first down at the night 41, now they're going to face third and long in their own territory. Penalty will back them all the way up to the 23-yard line. And it will be third down now and 16. 9.04 left, fourth quarter. And it's third and 16, St. Clement from their own 23. Caruso the lone back, Wooters wide to the left. Woodland and Festucian to the bottom of the screen on the right on third and long. Straight drops, Lewinsky in trouble, swings it out. And now we've got another flag down. Caruso makes the catch, but we've got a flag in the defensive secondary. We might have a defensive hold on Shrine. And oh boy, would that be a break for St. Clement. No, there is no flag. No flag. Caruso then makes the catch and is popped for a loss of three and it'll bring up fourth down and the Crusaders now will have to kick into the wind. Inadvertent flag, I'm going to guess it might have been a possible um, ineligible down that they caught, possibly even a defensive uh, something defense, but the pass was behind the line of scrimmage. Caruso. And there's a flag down by Caruso, and we're going to have roughing the punter against Royal Oak Shrine. And oh boy, talk about big penalties there. That will be a huge penalty against Shrine. A roughing the punter call on fourth down and 18 against the Knights. And that is an automatic first down. You talk about your backbreakers right there. The Knights, instead of having the football first and 10 themselves around midfield, rough the kicker on fourth and 18 and give St. Clement an automatic first down with 8.15 left in the football game. So the Crusaders try to capitalize now. Caruso, he's going nowhere. Boy, both teams have played outstanding defense tonight. Just stuffing the run, especially up the middle. Neither team able to do anything between the tackles tonight. And it'll be second down and 10. St. Clement's longest run from scrimmage tonight, an 11-yarder by Jones. Ranieri also had an 11-yarder. Kutch has had a couple of 13-yarders for Shrine, but for the most part, yardage is coming difficult for both teams. Slowinski straight back, second down, throws it out for Pestuchin. Out of his hands, incomplete, and it'll bring up third and 10. So Slowinski, now four out of nine. Check it, five out of nine in the ball game for 43 yards. It'll be third and 10 for St. Clement from their own 35. And the Shrine Knights try to come up with another stop here. They held the Crusaders moments ago, but a roughing the kicker penalty gave St. Clement new life. Pastuchin now sprints left on third down and long, third and 10. Lewinsky back, keeps the back in. Jones, he's in trouble and he's going down. And it's Darnell Jordan wrapping him up with a host of Knights. Swanson and D'Angelo Santo was there too. And it'll be fourth and 15 after a five yard loss. And once again, the Crusaders will have to kick into the wind. 7.15 left in the game, says 7-0 St. Clement lead. You like defensive football, you've seen a gem here tonight. Caruso 
gets it off, low liner into the wind, fielded at the 42. And Daniels has some room right side, and he is up into St. Clement territory at about the 34-yard line. And so now the Knights will try to get something going on offense with 6.56 left in the football game. They have a first and 10 at the Crusader 35-yard line, trailing it seven to nothing. Now we expected a good one tonight, and we are getting one between these two Catholic League C-section rivals. Cox tripped up, and breaking through was Tony Caruso to make the stop. A yard, and it'll be second down and nine. Kevin Parcell, the Shrine quarterback, just one out of four through the air tonight. Both teams have tried to grind it out on the ground and both teams' defenses have been up to the challenge. One turnover for each team. Each team fumbled it away once in the half. St. Clement has also had a field goal block. Shrine had a big goal line stand. Parcell just lofts it up and it is intercepted by Wooters at the 15-yard line. Ryan Wooters with the interception as Parcell under pressure just tossed it up and Wooters with the pick at the 15. And it's another big play for the defenses tonight. Shrine, as I was saying, had the big goal line stand late in the uh, third quarter to keep St. Clement from adding to their lead. Now their defense is going to be called upon again to try to stop the Crusaders with 5.38 left. Crusaders with the, oh, they lost the football, and it is still loose, and Shrine has it inside the 10. Jones never found the handle on it. And the Knights, it uh, looked like it was Swanson. First and goal, Shrine at the eight-yard line. Oh, how do you do? The one thing St. Clement could not afford, a turnover deep, and now the Crusader defense will be called upon again to make a stand of their own. Knights held on a goal line stand in the third. See if St. Clement can hold on a goal to go situation for a Shrine. And on the first play, that ball popped loose as Kutch lost it. Caruso threw him for a seven yard loss all the way back to the 15 and it will be second down and goal from the 15. What a defensive game we have seen tonight. These two teams, Crusaders and Knights, putting on an old fashioned whooping on each other. 440 in the ball game, seven nothing St. Clement clinging to that lead, a one yard fourth down touchdown pass in the first quarter, the game's only points. Parcell fakes, rolls right, goes deep end zone and it is caught, touchdown Royal Oak Shrine. Chris Swanson, the big tight end, goes up and gets it from 15 out for the TD. And it is 7-6, and we'll see what the Knights do now. If they will go for the kick and the tie, or if they will go for two in the lead. Setting it down for the placement with 4.25 to play in the football game. The extra point that would tie it up. Oh, that snap floated back there, but the kick is true. And with 425 left, we have ourselves a 7-7 seven, seven tie. So each team now has capitalized on a turnover to score their touchdowns. 
And with 425 left, it is all even at seven. Now the Crusaders will have to try to get back on track offensively. They have not scored since late in the first quarter. They're only touchdown of the game. Still a lot of time left, 425. Remember, though, the Crusaders are working into the wind here in the fourth. And just in case you're wondering, uh, yes, we do have overtime in high school ball. Each team gets it four cracks from the 10 yard line until one team gains an advantage. Haven't had one on game of the week this year. We've had them in the past. Centerline and Clawson played an overtime game here on this field a few weeks back. You saw the highlights on uh, sports scene three and the ball blows off the tee. We did have a classic overtime game between St. Clement and Detroit East Catholic on TV3 last season. That St. Clement pulled out. Low squibbing kick, Caruso at the 18. Looking back up the middle, hit at about the 34, and that's where the Crusaders will start. First and 10 at their own 34-yard line. 4-17 in the football game. St. Clement has two timeouts remaining. Remember, they used one before the fourth down play that they were stopped at on the Shrine goal line. Clock rolls as the ball is set. Teams have each turned it over twice, and each one fumble each has led to an opposing team's touchdown. Lone back behind Slowinski on first down. He'll drop straight back, and he's going down. Oh, the Knights have momentum on their side right now. Sanders the sack. A loss on the play of five. It'll be second down and 15. With three and a half left, Woodland checks into the game, as does Pestution. Well, after that goal line stand that Royal Oak Shrine made, you could see the momentum start to shift. Second and long Crusaders. Pitch, Caruso, he'll keep, he'll have room. And he has lots of room, one man to beat. Daniels giving chase, Caruso brought down, but not until he gets to the 20 yard line. 50 yards on the run for Caruso. First and 10, St. Clement at the 20 with 2.59 to play. Josh Daniels ran him down, but it is a 50-yard gain for Caruso. First and 10, St. Clement at the 20, 2.59 to play, and that will throw momentum back onto the Crusaders' side in a big-time hurry. Woodland and Caruso deep behind Slowinski. 114 yards now for Caruso on 20 carries. Caruso has it again, cuts it up, and gains about three to the 17. Give him just two to the 18. Second down and eight. Remember again, if it comes to a field goal, if St. Clement has to try to get the three to go ahead, they are into the wind and they've had one blocked already tonight. They would love to get the touchdown. Lewinsky back, short drop, steps out in the pocket, and he's going, and he lost the football, and Caruso falls on it for St. Clement. Oh my, that would have been disaster for the Crusaders. A loss of about eight on the play, and that is the third sack for the Knights. Inside of two minutes, third down, 15 from the 25. And again, now we see what Chris Bell has 
in the playbook. They're on the 25. This would be a long field goal into the wind. Ball is in the middle of the field, but got to figure Slowinski will go try to go up top and get the first down. He'll drop and roll. Roll this way, and he has room. Now throws. Complete Pastushin at the nine, and that is a St. Clement first down. Big time play by Slowinski and Pastushin. 16 yards, they needed 15. First and goal at the nine. Clock running a minute 15 to play. What a tremendous battle we've had tonight between the Crusaders and the Knights. First and goal at the nine, down to a minute now in the ball game in regulation, a 7-7 tie. Slowinski, he'll give to Caruso. Caruso banging forward and he ran right into Darnell Jordan at about the five. And it will be second down and goal. Clock still rolling with 40 seconds left. And now we'll have a timeout called by St. Clement. Crusoe, 22 carries, 120 yards. Second and goal from the five. 39 seconds left in regulation play. A 7-7 tie between St. Clement and Royal Oak Shrine. St. Clement will have one timeout remaining. Crusaders took a 7-0 lead late in the first quarter. One yard touchdown pass to Lewinsky to Ranieri. And Shrine tied it up in the fourth after recovering a fumble at the Crusader eight yard line. On first down they lost seven, but on second down Parcella 15 yard pass to Swanson. And that's where we stand. And after that touchdown, the Knights had all sorts of momentum, but a big 50-yard run by Caruso set up St. Clement deep in Knights territory. And then a big third and 15 pass moments ago from Slowinski to Pastushin has brought them second down goal at the five. 39 seconds to play. Full house behind Slowinski. He'll give Caruso again. Caruso pulling, and there's a flag down right where you would expect holding, and oh boy, would that hurt. That's what you got, holding on St. Clement with 33 seconds left. It'll stay second down, but now second and much longer, and importantly also, if you're looking at St. Clement's side, it would make it a longer field goal attempt if they are forced to attempt the field goal. Again, into a pretty good south wind. Ball backed up to the 13 on the 10-yard hold. So second and goal from the 13. Clock rolling now again with 30 seconds left. Remember, they have one timeout. Slowinski back. Looks for Wooters right side, overthrows him, and it'll bring up third down with 19 seconds to play. So it will be third and goal from the 13, and we will see again what Chris Bell decides. They've got the football almost dead between the uprights, and they do have a timeout left. See if they maybe they just run something, keep it in the middle of the field, and go for the win with the field goal. On third down, Woodland and Caruso in the backfield. That's, no, they'll throw. Slowinski, and he overthrew Pestuchin, the tight end at the goal line. And it will bring up fourth down with 16 seconds left. And here you go. St. Clement going to call their final timeout before this play as well. Chris Bell signaling for the timeout. With 16 seconds left. And so they'll talk it over on the sideline. I would have to believe that they will give Tony Caruso a shot at the field goal. It'd be about a 30-yarder into the wind, but dead in the middle of the field. St. Clement has had a field goal blocked tonight. 
You look at the Crusaders gather around Chris Bell. What a great football game we've had tonight on TV3 between the Crusaders and the Knights. Seven, seven year score with 16 seconds left in regulation time. Crusaders trying to remain undefeated and keep their number one ranking in the state, according to the Detroit News, in Class D. And Caruso does trot on for the field goal attempt. It will be a 32-yard attempt Dead in the middle of the field, and now the Knights will call timeout to try to ice him a little. Crusaders trying to remain undefeated. Knights trying to get right back in the middle of the prep bowl picture if they can get a victory here tonight. Next week, two homecomings on the game of the week. East Detroit homecoming against Warren Cousineau. And another big C-section game in the Catholic League as St. Clement plays host to Redford St. Agatha right here at Centerline Memorial next week. Certainly glad you've decided to join us for this one. I'm Jerry Kaminsky, Jim Naherniak, Dan Donnelly, Mark Dixon on the crew tonight. As Father Jacoby and the rest of the Crusaders look on for a Caruso 32-yard field goal attempt straight in the middle of the field with 16 seconds left in the game. He had a kick blocked, and now Shrine will use yet another timeout. So they're really trying to uh, put the ice on Caruso. If I'm Shrine, the only thing I'm wondering, I gotta wonder about the timeouts now is you, even if Caruso makes the kick, you're still gonna have about 12, 13 seconds left. And you're burning timeouts now. Could at least save a couple. Try to throw a couple downfield, get yourself in position. Vic Michaels down. The athletic director uh, for St. Clement in the green jacket also. Looking on as his Crusaders try for the win, and now we should finally get it away. Caruso from 32 out of Delugi's hold. It's up, and it is no good. And with 12 seconds left, it looks like we're going to head to an overtime session. Knights will run one play and uh, be surprised if it's not just a take the ball and fall on it head for OT. So another big defensive effort by the Knights as Chris Bell looks on. His team in a titanic defensive struggle tonight. Full house, but I just say, I, Parcel probably gonna take it and go to the knee. Don't want anything like the Eagles a few years ago in the NFL. Well, he keeps the ball. Found some room up to about the 31 for a first down. Clock will stop while they move the chains, but then it will run out, and we will head to overtime. So with the score tied 7-7 at the end of regulation time, we'll take this break. We'll come back with the overtime after this. And welcome back to Centerline Memorial Field and what a fitting way that this game going to end going into overtime St. Clement and Royal Oak Shrine they have put on a tremendous battle tonight defensively at Memorial a 7-7 tie heading to overtime and again in Michigan High School Athletic Association each team four downs from the 10 yard line obviously both teams taking the win St. Clement with the football first. Whoever can take the lead after an equal number of possessions will win it. Slowinski calling the signals. He'll pitch. Jones on first down. Got away from one man in the backfield, and that's about it. He got about three to the seven, and it will bring up second down. 
and goal, of course, from the seven. Last year, St. Clement downed East Catholic in a great overtime game on TV3. Trying to repeat that tonight. More importantly, trying to stay undefeated overall and in the league against Royal Oak Shrine here tonight, who have given the Crusaders everything they could handle. Second and goal from the seven. As we said, the teams are at the field where the wind is at their backs. Caruso again, slashing, and to about the six, and that was it. It has been very tough to run between the tackles tonight, and it is third down and goal from, they'll spot it at the five. And again, we'll see what Chris Bell and the Crusaders come up with. Ball on the right hash, just outside the five. Timeout, St. Clement. Each team gets one in, their, in the overtime. And you almost always see it used between before either third or fourth down if a team gets that deep in to their series. No sense hanging on to it. You don't get bonus points for saving them at the end of the year. It'll be third and goal from the five for St. Clement. And again, if they don't get the touchdown here, they will have a decision to make. If the ball sits where it remains, I imagine it won't be a decision. It'll be try to get the field goal, put the points on the board, and force Shrine to match you or beat you. They get it down to about the one or two, though, and then it's decision time on fourth down. Chris Bell and the Crusaders, Ron Slowinski, Tony Caruso, et cetera, would love to just take any decision out of the way and punch it in here on third down. Full house, back of Slowinski. Look for a roll left. And that's what'll happen. Slowinski under pressure, steps up, throws, and it is incomplete, broken up in the end zone. Intended for Pestution, and it was Daniels getting a hand in, as well as Parcell, and it'll bring up fourth down, and the Crusaders will try to put the three on the board with Tony Caruso attempting the field goal. Slowinski had the time, had the protection, and threw a rope to Pestution, but it looked like it was Daniels who got the hand in to flick it away. 23-yard field goal attempt, now Caruso. It's up, and it is good. So Caruso from 23 out gives St. Clement a 10-7 lead, and now it will be Royal Oak Shrine with a chance. And if they get the touchdown, they will win the football game. But for now, the Crusaders will ask their defense to step up one more time. Both teams' defenses have been rock solid tonight with very few exceptions. Shrine football now as Kevin Parcell comes out to lead his team out of the huddle. Touchdown and the Knights win it. Field goal, we go to a second overtime. A stop, Crusaders stay undefeated. Parcel, he'll pitch, Kutch, he's got nowhere to go and it'll bring up second down. Got a yard perhaps to the nine and it'll be second and goal. Down. Great high school football game tonight at Memorial Field. Full house back of Parcell. Daniels goes wide right. Now also joining him in the slot is Neville. Jumped and we've got a flag down and it is on Shrine. The left end picked up. And that'll be second goal from the 14. And boy, you can't afford penalties in OT down, especially when you need points to stay alive. Right, 
second and goal from the 14. Parcel has gotten the play from Coach John Goddard. Shrine's only touchdown came at this end of the field, a 15-yard pass from Parcel to Swanson in the right corner of the end zone. Parcel back, he'll loft it out left side, jump ball, and it is incomplete. He went for Swanson again, and it was Caruso, who else? who broke it up and it'll be third down and Swanson is hurt. Parcel tossed it up, jump ball between Swanson and Caruso. Caruso able to stick the hand in and break it up and Swanson came down hard. He is down in the end zone. It'll be third down now for the Knights. Umpire Pat Coffey there on the screen. Swanson might have just had the wind knocked out when he came down. And it is third down now from the 14. Remember, the Knights need at least a field goal to stay alive here in the football game. And they are back on the 14-yard line. Caruso's 23-yard field goal on St. Clement's possession gave them the lead. Now, key here with Swanson being injured on that last play and needing attention is he must sit this play out. And so again, Parcell will come over to the huddle from the sideline along with Tim Neville, number 33. Crusader imploring their crowd and their sideline to make some noise. Third down from the 14 here in overtime. Parcel back. He'll throw out incomplete and it'll bring up fourth down. Caruso on the coverage. And so now we'll see what the Knights do. They will go for the field goal and try to send it to a second overtime. It'll be with the wind. It'll be about a 31, 32 yard effort from the right hash. So it's either a Crusader win or we go to a second overtime right here. 32 yards. It's up. We're going to a second overtime. Tied at 10. Eric Shensky, the field goal to tie it at 10, a 32 yarder. And we will go to overtime number two. Look at the Crusader cheerleaders as we have earned our keep here tonight. A game quick first half, quick second half really, but we get to the overtime. Jim Nerniak, Dan Donnelly on the cameras, Mark Dixon in the truck, I'm Jerry Kaminsky. And we do have this break again between overtimes. While we have it, let's take a break ourselves and we'll come back in a moment. Back at St. Clement, uh, Centerline Memorial Field, second overtime about to begin. It'll be the Knights with the football first this time. Each team with a field goal in the first overtime, a 23-yarder for Caruso of St. Clement, 32-yarder for Shensky of Shrine. A 10-10 tie as we enter the second overtime from the 10-yard line. Parcel gave it on the reverse, second man through, and oh, he got stood up at the five, got to about the four. That was Glovac who stood up the ball carrier Martell, but Martell got it down to the four yard line. Willie Martell with a six yard run. 
Some misdirection there by the Knights on first down. And they have the football at the four. Trying to dent this Crusader defense. Both teams have played a whale of a football game. Up the middle and in, touchdown! Kevin Cox from four out for the touchdown. And the Knights grab the lead. 16-10. And Shensky will be on to attempt the point after. Two plays it takes the Knights. You know both teams have to be wearing down a little bit, but that was a quick strike by the Knights. Six yards by Martell on first down. Four more for the touchdown. Again, that snap just floats back there. Crusaders might have got a piece of it, but it's through anyway. And oh boy, it is now Shrine 17 and St. Clement 10. And the Crusaders know what they have to do now. They have to score a touchdown to stay alive in this football game and get the point after. Bell sends Slowinski out with the directions. And I'll tell you what, too. They score the touchdown. I'd be the most surprised person in the world if they went for two in the win. I think you just go for another overtime, but we we will find out. First, the Crusaders have to get the football in the end zone. Five and oh, number one in the state. Class D, according to the Detroit News. Slowinski, play fake, first down, rolling right. He'll throw, it's complete. Caruso, touchdown on first down. How do you do? And it is 17-16 on the first play of the overtime for St. Clement. Tony Caruso is having himself some kind of ball game. And now we've got a St. Clement timeout. And Chris Bell might think about this. Does he go for the win right now? Or the placement and go for a third overtime, send his defense back out on the field one more time against the Knights. Take a look at some people gathered in the end zone down there on the left side. It has been a classic football game tonight. This is definitely a keeper. First down, Slowinski to Caruso. As we said, Tony Caruso having a tremendous night. He's gained 120 yards rushing. That's his second catch of the night. Has a touchdown. He's played a good game defensively for St. Clement. He booted the field goal in the first overtime that gave St. Clement their points in the first OT. And we're about to see what Chris Bell's decision is here after this touchdown that has brought the Crusaders within one. And it looks like they are going for the uh, conversion. I see Delugi. well, Delugi, number 17, is the holder, but they are going for two in the win right here. Oh, my. All or nothing on the two-point conversion in the second overtime. Slowinski rolls right. He has room. He heads for the corner, flips it out, and it is caught for the conversion. Caruso and St. Clement wins it 18-17. So with the completion from Slowinski on the touchdown and the two-point conversion, and St. Clement pulls it out. Chris Bell goes for broke in the second overtime, and it pays off. They win it 18 to 17. What a tremendous, tremendous football game here tonight. St. Clement stays unbeaten, 6-0 and in overall, 3-0 and now in the league. Shrine falls to 4-2 and two and 1-2. And, and next week, we have a key one all over.
over again in the C section. St. Clement against Redford St. Agatha. Boy, you don't want to miss that one. Our final again, St. Clement 18, Shrine 17 in double overtime. Now for Jim Naherniak, Dan Donnelly, and Mark Dixon, I'm Jerry Kaminsky. So long, everyone. Tremendous football game here tonight. Welcome to another edition of Sports Scene 3 here on TV3, McLean Hunter, Cable TV in East Point and Centerline. As always, I'm Jerry Kaminsky. Let's go over the last couple of weeks and also we will take a look, of course, at the coming week's schedules. We've got three big homecoming games that we can talk about. We've also got football standings and playoff point standings, so let's get to it. First off, a couple weeks ago on Friday, September the 30th, it was a football action and East Detroit taking on Port here in Northern up in the north country up there and it was a bad game for the shamrocks started raining about midway through the second quarter but it started pouring on the shams a little earlier than that 42 to 6 northern with the victory in the ball game shatiel edwards the lone east detroit touchdown the sophomore quarterback uh, getting that one for east detroit huskies dominated throughout however as the shams lost their fifth in a row and Centerline took a blow to their Macomb Oakland Athletic Conference title hopes after opening the season with those four consecutive home games. They went on the road for the first time and the Avondale Yellow Jackets stung them 28-15 to take sole possession of first place in the MOAC. Anthony Pryor, a 37-yard touchdown that opened the scoring for the Jackets. Jeff Wilson's four-yard TD made it 14-0. Then a key play in the ball game, third and eight for the Jackets, and Pryor went 76 yards, 21-0 Avondale. Panthers tried to come back. Bruce Roberts hit Jay Richards for a 47-yard TD to make it 21-7 at halftime, but the Jackets came out and took six minutes off the clock on an 11-play drive to open the third quarter to go up 28-7. Dale Bowlby, a nine-yard TD to cap the drive. Ed Spacritelli had an 11-yard TD, and then Roberts had a two-point conversion to bring Centerline within 13, but that's as close as they got. They lose their first of the year to drop to 4-1, and 1-1 one, one and one in the Macomb Oakland Athletic Conference. In soccer action, Sterling Heights beat East Detroit 5-1, to one, turned Tony Purgatone the lone goal for the Shams. Centerline also a loser by the identical 5-1 score to South Lake. Nasser Deeb had two goals for the Cavaliers. Saturday, October 1st, St. Clement found themselves trailing for the first time in the season, but came back to roll over St. Florian 36-7. Florian did have a 7-6 lead at one point in the game. Ron Slowinski, 9 of 13, 186 yards, three touchdowns passing, an eight-yard toss to Brian Pastuchin, and two touchdown strikes to Brian Wooters of nine and 97 yards for the scores. Lenzel Jones, two touchdown runs of four and 55 yards. Florian's only touchdown on a 60-yard kickoff return by Autris Shelby for their lone point. St. Clement moved to 5-0 overall, 2-0 in the league. And a couple of cross-country events, the 13th annual Cardinal Mooney, and Mooney beat the Crusaders 52-25. Aaron Rewalt trying, in fact, a tremendous ball game and a big game for each team still as far as the Catholic League C-section prep bowl berth went. Just a tremendous game. We hope you've seen it on Game of the Week. Let's take a look at the highlights of the Crusaders and the Knights. Boy, if you missed this one, you really missed what high school football is all about. Tremendous game with big implications. St. Clement coming into the game ranked number one in the state in Class D by the Detroit News. Both teams, yards hard to come by early. Lenzel Jones run down by Anthony Angelo Santo of the Knights. Then watch Kevin Kutch get hit in the middle of the line. Ball popped loose, and Matt Daniels recovered for St. Clement. And that set up the game's first score. Tony Caruso, who had a big game for St. Clement, will slash for some good yardage here. Crusaders been able to run the ball all year long, but as we said, did find it going a little tough 
on this one. They got a scare here. Jones will fumble, and the ball will go out of bounds at about the one-yard line, fortunate for St. Clement. Fourth down and goal, though, now from the one. Nice play action pass, perfect call. Ron Slowinski to Jeremy Ranieri, 7-0 Crusaders. Crusaders look like they're on the move again in the second quarter here. Jones will take it left side for a first down. Some good running there by Lenzel, but the drive will stall. St. Clement lines up for a punt. They'll fake it. Caruso up the middle. He has first down yardage, but he loses the football. It's recovered by Willie Martell of Royal Oak Shrine, and that puts a stop to the Crusaders' drive there. And then the Knights look to capitalize. Kevin Parcell will hit Kevin Kutch on the pass here. A nice scramble by Parcell. Kutch, nice job to come back to the ball as he will make the catch, but the Crusaders will stiffen. Watch the hit, Blaine Woodland will lay on Kutch right there, and that will help stall the drive. St. Clement on the move again right before the half. Slowinski to Ranieri in the flat, and Ranieri will rumble all the way down inside Shrine territory, inside the 20-yard line. Now Caruso will come on, 32-yard attempt late in the half. You watch a little hesitation there, and it is blocked by the Knights. Still 7-0 Crusaders at halftime. And St. Clement goes on the move in the third quarter. Ranieri on the option. He will take it to the Shrine 11-yard line. Then it will be Caruso with the call, and he will drive his way forward to the three. Fourth down now, Slowinski, quarterback keep, and he gets absolutely nothing. And it stays 3-0, Crusaders after three, after the great goal line stand by the Knights. Fourth quarter, Parcel back as the Knights drive. He's picked off, though, by Brian Wooters to end the threat at the 15-yard line. But on the very next play, Jones can't find the handle on the pitch. Darnell Jordan recovers for the Knights. And two plays later, Royal Oak Shrine gets it into the end zone to tie it up. Chris Swanson will receive the pass from Jones, for, for, from Parcell, I should say, for the touchdown 15-yard score. It's tied at seven. Crusaders still time, though, here in the fourth. Watch Caruso bust this one. A 50-yard run. Caruso over 100 yards in the game, 120, in fact. 50 on that romp to the 20-yard line. Then it'll be Slowinski rolling right, and he will hit Brian Pestuchin with the pass as the Crusaders driving late in the ball game. But after a holding penalty, Caruso, 32 yards to win it into a stiff wind. He misses. We go to overtime. Crusaders took a 10-7 lead on their first possession on a Caruso field goal. Then Parcel looking for Swanson, and Caruso breaks it up in the end zone. Knights get the field goal. Tied at 10, we go to a second overtime. And on second down, it is Koch up the middle for a four-yard score. Shrine leads it 17-10. Pressure on St. Clement. They've got to come through. First down play. Nice play fake again. Slowinski to Caruso out of the backfield. He finds the corner. 17-16. And what do you do? Crusaders and Chris Bell go for two. Slowinski flips it to Caruso. And St. Clement on a gutty call by their coach and a gutty performance by their team wins it. 18-17 to stay undefeated, 6-0. Stay on track for a prep bowl berth. And we had a chance to talk to Coach Chris Bell a couple days later about the football game. And he was well pleased with the result, of course, but thought the execution on his team's part could have been a little bit better in the Shrine game. We also talked to him about the upcoming St. Agatha game this coming weekend. Chris, a big win against Shrine the other night, and you said the team didn't play as well as you wanted. A tough game, 7-7 after regulation, and both teams had a little bit of trouble offensively. In fact, both scores came off turnovers, so not really the kind of game you expected uh, execution-wise from your club. No, not execution-wise. Uh, Intensity-wise, I thought we did a good job. The kids played hard. We just made some dumb mistakes. You know, there's no excuse for fumbling footballs. There's no excuse for missed assignments. And those are things that we have to correct if we expect to win this weekend. A uh, big play in the game in regulation was the fourth down call near the goal line where Shrine was able to stack you up, and it seemed like they got some momentum from that point. Did, it, did the kids uh, 
maybe lose a little intensity after they got stopped there? Yeah, I think it was discouraging, and it was it was a bad call on my part in that situation. We should have given the ball to our money player and gone back to our tailback in that situation. But uh, we felt with six inches to go that we were getting decent penetration, decent push off the line, and Ryan didn't get a good foot, and they got a good surge, and, and it really gave them the uh, momentum for the fourth quarter. Then you go into overtime, the teams trade field goals in the first one. They come out second to overtime, and they score on you in two plays uh, after the defense really had shut them down all game. Did that surprise you that they struck quick like that? Well, they caught us. You know, we were aggressive all, all night, doing a good job running things down. And they caught us on a counter, and our defensive end was in position. He just didn't have enough speed to run it down. Uh, and that put them in position. Uh, they were second and three from there, and then uh, they busted one in, in for the touchdown. And uh, it surprised us a little bit but uh, set the stage for us to, uh, to win the game. And the call on the first down in overtime, the, the pass to Crusoe out of the backfield, confident in going for that one on first down? Yeah, they, they hadn't shown that they had picked that up, and they stayed in the goal line defense and were stacking their safeties up top, so they had nobody responsible for the flats. We thought that we could get that, and uh, we're successful. Of course, the big question, how much of a decision was it to, to go for two? Obviously, a gutsy call, and why did you make that decision at that time? Basically, there were a couple of reasons. One, our, our kicking game was shaky, and, uh, and we felt we had the opportunity to win the football game. And uh, in that situation, we just felt it was all or nothing. We're not going to lose a game going for a tie. And I talked to the kids before we made the decision, and the kids had, had said that they wanted to go for it. They were a little skeptical at first, but we knew what we wanted to do. And uh, we knew that we could get outside and we'd have a good opportunity, and we got outside, and, and Ronnie and Tony made a great play. It was a very similar play to the touchdown, except obviously from the three-yard line. But did Ron obviously have the option of either keeping it or then tossing it? And it looked like right. he waited until just the last split second to do that it. That was the difference between the touchdown play and that call uh, for the two-point conversion. We gave Ronnie the run pass option. Option. We had Brent sealed down and we got outside and we thought he was going to run for it. And once he got outside, the guy covering Tony came up to stop him and that opened up Tony in the end zone and Ronnie just shuffled it in the end zone. And it was tough for us to see. We, we really couldn't see what was happening because it was in the far corner and we just saw people jumping in the corner and we're hoping it was our guys. I think everyone had to wait for the officials call on it in, in the final judgment, but you did come out with the win. Got another big game this week, obviously, now with St. Agatha in this league. You don't get any breaks. First, I want to touch on the practice situation now you played a rare Friday night game and you go all the way to Sunday without playing that's a long week for you is that an advantage or a disadvantage it's a little bit of both it's going to give us an opportunity to heal up we got some guys with some bumps and some bruises that have to heal up but it's also a disadvantage because it's homecoming week and the kids are going to be up all week we don't want them to play the game on Thursday and Friday you know we want them to be ready to play the game on Sunday so we'll tone things down shorten things down we'll go physical the early part of the week and then just make sure that we're fine-tuned the later part of the week so it's, it's a little bit of both. Talk about Agatha now a little bit. It's a game that could come down to the winner goes to the prep bowl, especially with Lakes beating Agatha this past week. Yeah, Agatha's only shot to get to the prep bowl is to beat us. And, uh, and they're a good football team. They've been state ranked all year, and they possess three or four outstanding football players and pretty good supporting cast. Uh, they have a great tailback who's rushed for close to 1,000 yards in six games. They have a quarterback who's 6'3", 220 pounds, can throw the ball 60 yards in the air, likes to run. And they have a very good wide receiver. Uh, defensively, they're led by uh, strong safety, inside linebacker at times, uh, Bob Case, who's just all over the field. They have two giant tackles who go both ways. So they've got some good size and some good athletes. I think overall, I think we're a better football team. I think we have better depth. And can, uh, can 11 guys working together beat four guys you know, of extreme talent, you know, that's going to be the big key. This is a, as we said, a very competitive league, and, and you really can't let down any week in the league, especially with Lakes, yourself, Agatha, and Shrine, all of them have been ranked in the state at some point during the season. Does it help having a team like St. Clement that's been there the last few years and knows what to do, knows how to stay focused? It does. You know, these guys, you know, we don't have to talk a lot about mental preparation. Uh, you know, these guys know what it's going to take. They know what it's all about. And I think that gave us the advantage in the Shrine game. You know, it got down to overtime, and we had plenty of chances just to fold our tents and go home, but the kids made the plays. Uh, they've played in big games before. Uh, two years ago, they were in a similar situation where they were playing at St. Agatha, and the winner was going to the prep bowl. So that experience all carries over, and I think they're going to be ready to go on Sunday. And also on Friday the 7th, Centerline bounced back.
on the gridiron with a 44-14. First, the football standings, and we'll start in the Catholic League C section. As you see, St. Clement, the one-game lead now over Lakes and St. Agatha, and the big game coming up with St. Clement and St. Agatha this Sunday. Over in the Macomb Oakland Athletic Conference, it is Avondale with a one game lead on centerline and Madison as the Jackets down centerline, as you saw a couple of Fridays back. And so a big game with centerline and Madison for the Panthers homecoming as well. Panthers also have that little brown jug game coming up, as we'll see in a moment. And in the Macomb Area Conference Blue Division, the surprise of the season, the Roseville Panthers. They are 4-0 and on top of the division by a half game. The league title will come down to the Roseville Grosse Point North game coming up this Friday night. Great race out in the MAC Blue. Now as far as playoff points go, in Class B Region 4, you take a look. Only one unbeaten team, or actually two, Marysville and Cranbrook. But Marysville heading the list. They look like they'll probably get in even with a loss. Centerline hanging in at number four right now. But you see it is a dogfight there. That Madison centerline homecoming game going to be a key game. And seven and two might not make it this year in Region 4. The last couple years, Panthers have gotten in at seven and two. Eight and one would probably assure them of it because, of course, if they beat Lincoln, they pick up a lot of points for beating a Class A school. And in Class D Region 4, well, St. Clement's going to the playoffs, no doubt. Now, the interesting thing is they might have two playoff games against teams that they will have already met during the season. I uh, wouldn't bet against a St. Clement St. Agatha rematch somewhere in the playoffs, but look at Cardinal Mooney there, and Mooney could be St. Clement's opponent in the prep bowl if St. Clement and Mooney both win their divisions. And again, now looking at it one and four, they might meet again in the playoffs as well. So the playoffs could be a story of rematches in Class D Region 4. Mm. Schedules for the next.